Hey guys, so in this video, what we're gonna do is install Home Assistant on Proxmox. Now, this is a follow-up to my video last week where we basically configured a mini PC to kind of be a home server and run Jellyfin and Docker. And this is gonna be an add-on to that. We're gonna run Home Assistant OS inside of a virtual machine in Proxmox. Now there are many other ways that you can do this, but this will automatically install the Home Assistant Supervisor and I've just found that this is the best way for me to run it. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Now I wanna jump right into this, but one thing I wanna mention is that we're gonna be going through this the manual way. There is a script that you can run. I have it on my website and I have steps that you could do. That's definitely an easier way of doing this, but this is the manual way if you wanna do it this way and just set everything up yourself. So at this point, what I have done is I just launched Proxmox and the only other thing I did is I went to the Home Assistant Downloads page and I downloaded the KVM slash Proxmox image and I downloaded and extracted that. And at this point, we are ready to go. Now there are probably other ways of doing this, but this is the way that I found to be best. So on here, I have the Home Assistant QCOW2 image. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna rename this. And what that's gonna do is inside of Proxmox, that's gonna allow me to actually upload it directly here. So it will come up as a file that you can upload. And then after the upload is finished, you will have it here. So what we're gonna do is create a new virtual machine. And inside of it, you can give it a name. And then inside of the OS tab, we're gonna click do not use any media. Inside of the system tab, we're gonna check off this QEMU agent. And then we are gonna delete this disk. It'll make sense in a minute here. But then you can go through and specify how many cores you want for the CPU, how much memory you want, all the network settings if you wanna change any of this. And then in the confirmation page, just make sure you do not start the virtual machine. So we're gonna click finish here and then we're gonna have a new virtual machine here that does not have any disks. So what we have to do at this point is we have to add that image directly to this virtual machine. So if you open up the Proxmox shell, we're gonna run one command. Now this command might defer if you are using different storage for wherever that image is, but basically you have to make sure you know where that image was uploaded. And then what we're gonna do is run this command. All right, so let's talk through this command. What we're gonna do is QM import disk. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna import this disk into virtual machine ID 102. So 102, if yours is different, you're gonna to have to update that there. Now this path right here is the path to the local ISO directory. And that is where I uploaded this image here. So if you are using a different storage, you might have to change this. Finally, local LVM, this is where we're gonna be importing that disk. This is where the virtual machine disk will live. So if you're using something else, you'll have to update that as well. But as soon as you press enter, it's gonna go in and it's gonna import that disk. Now the disk is imported and if you go into the actual hardware settings, you'll see we have an unused disk here. So what we will do is double click this and then we're just gonna add it. And you will see that now we have our disk added. Now there's two more changes we have to do. The first is that we have to add an EFI disk and make sure you select your storage there. And then what you'll have to do is uncheck this pre-enroll keys and you can press okay. And finally, what we are gonna do is change the BIOS to this and then we can press okay. Finally, we're just gonna change the boot order here. So in the options, what we're gonna do, and you can start it at boot if you want, but in the options, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this boot order and we're gonna uncheck these two and then we'll just move this up to the top for our boot disk. And at this point, you can go to the console and select start and assuming we did everything right. So after a minute or so, it will boot up and then you'll see that we can access it on the IP address 10.2.0.55 port number 8123. So what I'm gonna do is just open a new tab, type that in, press enter, and at this point, Home Assistant is configured. So after that finishes running, we can create a new smart home and just create a user account with a password. You can update your home location. I'm just gonna leave that. You can update your country. You can select next. You can modify any of these settings, select next. It will find compatible devices. I'm not gonna worry about that now. So you can click finish, and then you will be brought to Home Assistant. So like I said earlier, this is the supervised version of Home Assistant. So this add-on section here is going to be where you can add on a bunch of really powerful things. If you're using Home Assistant inside of Docker without the supervisor, you're gonna basically unlock an entire new world here. Now, as with the video that I released last week, one of the main reasons I wanna run this is obviously simplicity, but I wanna make sure that it gets backed up too. So inside of that video, I show how you can set that up, but you will see that this virtual machine will automatically get backed up every night. If I have any problems, I know you can do backups inside of the Home Assistant OS, but I just find this to be an easier overall way of managing everything. And 
Obviously you have to go through now and configure it, but in terms of Home Assistant being configured on Proxmox, that is it. At this point, you are good to go. So if there are any other things you'd recommend that I add to this mini PC home server, I'd love to hear them in the comments. There are definitely other things I should probably add, but right now that hits the three overall requirements that I had for this device. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.